Welcome to ACI, the Network Made Simple learning series. In this video, we will cover Module 2, Configuring Physical Connectivity, Chapter 1, Understanding the Model. In previous videos, we cover how ACI works behind the scenes, and we said as part of the initial installation, it provides us with a fully automated ISIS underlay and a VXLAN overlay network between the spine and leaf layers. We also said that leaves perform as VXLAN tunnel endpoints where we NCAP and DCAP all traffic entering and leaving the fabric respectively and that you may grow any layer over time automatically. But you may be wondering by now, what traffic will I actually NCAP and DCAP using VXLAN? Well, the answer is simple. Basically any traffic coming from any device you connect, mainly at the leaf layer. For example, think of a server or a non-ACI switch which may be sending traffic using VLAN tags natively. We can take that traffic in ACI and encapsulate it using VXLAN to transfer it to its destination. That connection to the ACI fabric may be a single NIC or dual NIC using VPC, for example, connecting to two different leaves. The only exception for VXLAN, NCAP, and DCAP would be fiber channel and FCOE connections. But we will cover this in another chapter within this module. All this is important because you will see that in ACI we have two different networks. The logical one, which defines how elements communicate through the ACI fabric by using concepts like tenons, EPGs, and others, which we will cover in Module 3. And the physical one, which defines how a device is connected to the ACI fabric, for example, access port, trunk, BPC, and so on. Both of them are needed in ACI as you can imagine. However, keep in mind we will manage them both through a single pane of glass, which in this case is the APIC. Every time I want to connect something to an ACI fabric, I always ask myself five basic questions that most of the time will help me getting the physical network configuration done. The first question is, what do I want to connect to ACI? And the answer may vary. You may want to connect physical devices like switches, bare metal servers and routers, or virtual servers like VMware with vCenter and virtual switches, or even fiber channel connections to fiber channel switches. These types of connections are called domains, and it is the first thing we will define. The second question is, do I need VLANs or vSANs for that domain? And most of the time you do, except probably for layer 3 connections where you don't use sub-interfaces or SBIs. So you need to create a pool of VLANs or vSANs allowed to flow through that domain. The third step now is to group all the domains you created in step 1, which you will want to allow on a specific interface later. We do this by creating something called an AAEP. Most of the time, you would think you will have a single domain attached to a specific interface. Therefore, you would create one AAEP and assign it to the domain you created in step 1. But there may be some exceptions where you may bind more than one domain to an AAEP. For example, think of blade server systems like Cisco UCS, where you may want to connect your fabric interconnects to the leaf layer, but in reality, that physical connection may transport multiple sub-connections to different blades, therefore different domains, like Beamware, Bare Metal, Hyper-V, and others to represent these connections. The AAEP will help you glue all those domains together and then allow them to flow through a specific interface which we will now specify in step 4. So moving now to step 4, let's select an interface and tell ACI which type we need it to be through an interface profile. By creating an interface profile, we specify the type of interface we may be using like access, trunk, and others you should be familiar with. Just like with any regular interface, we can assign a policy to it, like BPDU guard, CDP enable, speed, and so on. We then group all these policies together through something called a policy group and assign it to an interface. That policy group will also have the AAEP we created in step three. And the end result would look similar to what is displayed in this diagram, which is based on the previous example on UCS. Finally, and as part of the step 5, we will tell ACI which switch we want to apply that interface profile to by creating a switch profile that contains our configuration from step 4. 
Let's take a look at another example to make sure we understood the basic concepts. Let's imagine we want to connect a legacy switch to leaf 1 on port 1.1. In step 1, I define the type of connection I want, which in this case is a physical domain since it is a non-ACI switch. In step 2, we define the VLANs that will flow through port 1.1 in a VLAN pool, for example, VLAN 1 and VLAN 2. And then I will associate it to the physical domain. Think of this as your switchboard trunk allowed VLAN command. In step 3, we will create an AAEP, which will later be used within a policy group, and we will add the bare metal domain we created on step 1 to it. The AAEP now includes the physical domain and associated VLAN pool configuration. So, assuming we already configured the legacy switch as shown on your screen, we can now move to step 4, where we will select port 1.1 with an interface selector, and we will configure a trunk port by creating an interface profile. This interface profile will have a policy group with all the policies I may want to enable for this interface. In my case, they are going to be BPDU guard, CDP enable, and obviously the AAEP I created on step 3. As you can see, configurations are very similar if we compare the legacy switch one and the physical network configuration on ACI. So, our knowledge as network admins is still very relevant. All four previous steps, which are grouped together by the interface profile, are now available to be assigned to a switch or switches. We will do that in our final step 5, where we will choose leaf 1 by creating a switch profile and switch selector and attaching the interface profile we create in step 4 to it. That's it. In today's chapter, we will learn the physical connectivity model and the basic questions we will be asking ourselves every time we need to connect something to ACI, which will lead us to configure the elements we will need. Keep in mind that many of these elements within the ACI fabric may be used multiple times for other connections as well, since APIC provides us with a model that creates objects behind the scenes for each of them. This allows us not only to reference them in other configurations, but also to consume and modify them through APIC RESTful API which may allow you to also configure your ACI fabric through orchestrators or DevOps tools if you prefer, in an open fashion. In the following chapters of this module, we will cover specific configuration examples on how to connect physical servers, virtual servers, routers, fiber channel connections, and more. So this should allow you to connect pretty much anything to an ACI fabric. ACI provides you with a better, simpler, and secure network, any size, anywhere, and on any cloud. If you want to learn more about other common tasks and how ACI radically simplifies network provisioning and operations, please watch the rest of the videos in this series. Thanks for watching.